Okie doke. So we're back here. And what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to cut the uh, this area here through that. All right. And the way we're going to do that, um, so we really want to put it in the vise kind of like that, kind of hanging out. But I need to know where the end of that is uh, in relation to my little flip stop here, right? So that's x0 and you know I set the absolute coordinate of my DRO on that so I can come back to it kind of anytime I want right so which is convenient um, so what I want to do is since these two pieces are the same length okay I want to, I want to set a little stop back here but I need to know where that is so I need to so I can figure out where the front of my piece the datum on the front is okay so I'm just going to kind of cheat a little bit instead of whipping out an edge finder and doing all that I'm just going to do it a different way just for fun and uh, I have a two inch gauge block here I'm just going to pop that in there like so all right put it up against my stop that I know where that is okay slide the stop up to that and just secure it okay so that's a pretty snappy way of uh, of doing that and um, if I had a tool in the uh, in the spindle, I wouldn't have to take it out, and you know, might save some time. Now you see me here. Um, actually, let me just show you. This is my little stop that I made about a million years ago, uh, but it has a thumb screw in it. Well, sometimes I want it tighter than uh, thumb screw tightness, so I have a little slot in there that fits the end of my um, my nice thick sturdy scale here. Okay. And some guys are going, oh my god, it's a measuring tool, what are you doing, what are you doing? And uh, so I've had this particular scale for a really, really long time, okay? I remember breaking the last one um, in a press break. I was gauging something and I snapped it off, and that was 20-something years ago, okay? So I've had this one 20-something years. It's still fine, okay? And guess what? It's been doing this a lot. So uh, we're just going to slide that up. We're going to tighten it down. All right, and that's secure. Take my little gauge block out. Okay, so now we kind of know where that stop is in relation to the world. And let's see, let's get that out of the way. We can put our piece in up against the stop gently. Um, let's see, let's watch out what we're doing here. Let's, we're working on the fixed jaw, so let's uh, <laughs> keep working on that. I want to switch between them uh, unintentionally there. Okay. So now, we know that is, that's two inches from our flip stop. If we know the length of that, then we know where that edge is you know, pretty precisely. So, what we'll do is measure that. All right, two inch, oh, or excuse me, three inch, 053. All right, so let me switch to absolute. Okay, so we're gonna, um, if that's zero, we need to go an inch, 053, beyond. Oh, five, three, okay, beyond that, okay, and so now the spindle is directly over that edge, I can zero this, okay, and then my uh, radius is actually one-eighth of an inch off of the end of this part, so let me just scoot off of the end of that part, eighth of an inch, blah, 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 blah right there, okay, so I'm, I'm in position now to make my cut. Now, making the cut, we're going to uh, use an annular cutter, a roto brooch, um, and this particular one is a two inch length of cut. So um, we're going to use that. Let me put it in the spindle, and we'll get cracking here. All right, so we're ready to go. And about 200 RPM. Let me double check my numbers. Okay, I'm good. Go for it. Now th these things, they don't care if you're cutting a partial hole or a full hole or whatever, or through another hole, they could care less. So that's one nice thing about them that I like. It's nice and smooth. 
And I, you know, if you look at the the Hoogan website, you don't have to back them and clear them, but uh, it's just kind of old habits die hard. I don't think there's any harm in it. Who doesn't like a little liquid love anyway, right? And there's the piece, it just fell out. Uh, I can't quite see it. Uh, it's gonna be hot, so I don't wanna pick it up. All right, we'll try. Yeah. Yes, it's hot. It's hot. And there's a little piece, a little slug that came out, and uh, that's what happens when it breaks through at the bottom, right? Bink, it leaves that little flange on there, which is sharper than a monkey's uncle. So, uh, okay, so that's one. Uh, let me do the other one, and then uh, we're going to set the boring head up again and uh, whap, 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 and uh, chip away at that thing again. Okay, so uh, we already we showed how to uh, set the boring head for the correct radius, so this one's already set now, and we're ready to take a cut. And I'm starting from that direction and moving in to the correct spot with the correct radius. So let's get down close to where we want to start there. Okay. All right, we're in gear. And a little oily oil on there. Let's uh, see what happens. Pretty happy. If you notice, I let some oil off up here, and it just runs down the cut, and then catches the catches up with the tool there. Instead of trying to stick it in, stick the brush in there. Also, I increased the feed rate from uh, the previous cuts to the vertical feed rate, so it's uh, a little faster now. Okay, so just finished. And I like to stop it at the bottom and then pull the tool clear and then come up and then reset everything. That way it doesn't leave a drag mark up the, uh, up the radius there. Well, you know what? I'm going to go right to my number because that was only uh, five thousandths off of my number. So uh, let's uh, go for it. Oh, yeah. Here's the end result. Got some kind of nasty burrs on it there, so let's uh, take care of some of those so I don't kill myself on these. Yeah, see that? So that, that's a cut that fades into nothing from two directions there. So it's like a, you can see that it's like a razor blade. In fact, Here's a good recipe. Hold on to an oily razor blade and uh, try to snap a piece off. <laughs> recipe for getting wounded, right?
All right, that's better. All right, well, that's pretty good. Two radiuses there. Um, so uh, I think the next ones are going to be uh, these big side ones here because I think those are the same on these two. So uh, let's get set up to, to do those guys because that ought to be interesting because we're going to have a trippy uh, interrupted cut uh, into, that, uh, into that material. Okay, so now here's the advantage of this deal here is I can just take this off. Okay, and now all I got to do is shift back to absolute and I'm back on my my stop so uh, sometimes uh, um, so now I don't have to re-edge find anything or do anything goofy right now I can go back in there go right up against there like that okay and I got a uh, I got a juicy decent uh, juicy datum <laughs> okay so uh, we got a different size rotor brooch in we're set up vertically now we're gonna carve out the side of this um, it may, you know, I'm not going all the way through, so it may leave something that we have to break off. So let's let's see how this goes, and um, uh, we'll decide if we want to do do it all that way. All right. Now well, you can see. Let me double check and make sure I'm in the right spot. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, nice tight vise. Bottom line, you know, you could do all this with the boring head too, so we just happen to have these available to us. look in there yeah so there's gonna be a, a chunk in there but that's okay I think we'll be able to get it out easy enough so hey this thing could care less whether it's a partial hole or what going to go down to this cut here. Alright, that looks pretty good. Well, you, um, hmm. I don't know if I'll be... Yeah, it feels pretty solid. Uh, I'll get a little hacksaw and I'll trim that off and uh, snap it off and and then I'll do the other sides and then we'll come back and use the boring head on that and cut it to the right radius and uh, continue on. Oh, yeah, there it goes. That wasn't too bad. Alright, so there's a, a little chunk of deer there. Okay, that kind of worked. All right, let me do the rest of them and uh, we'll be back shortly. All right, these things are starting to look like something now. You can see the, uh, the shape is starting to emerge there. Okay, um, so this is after the rota broaching, just a roughing to remove that material. So we're gonna use our same trick. We're gonna set, or it's already set, the radius is set on the boring head and we're gonna rattle our way down and uh, keep moving in until we're on the uh, the correct radius center and rinse and repeat three more times and uh, we're looking pretty sassy there so uh, 
Let's uh, get with the program there, huh?